going on guys it's your boy Clint from Old Messiah and we are here with some more world flipper action and today it is time to talk tier list guys I have finally gotten the pre-download of world flipper on my mobile device now it's time to let everybody know who are the best five star characters that you can possibly summon for and we're going to give a brief description of each now before i get into this tier list i want to give a huge shout out to underlight from the official world flipper discord not only is he a jp veteran but he's also a moderator in the english world flipper discord he is the one that put this tier list together and without his hard work we would not have this beginner guidance to start off so be sure to join the official world flipper discord using the link below and give underlight a huge thank you from the wolf pack because again his brain is much much bigger than mine and has a lot more wrinkles and i want to make sure that you guys have the best possible guidance out the gate all right so we're going to use under life's tier list for now and then after about a month or so i'm going to come up with my own tier list but we're going to start with this one now here's a physical representation of what the tier list is going to look like but now i'm going to go down and kind of explain some of the more valued characters and why they are such all right so we're going to start with wagner he is the fire element he has an f tier rating only roll for him if you love him wagner is memed as one of the weakest characters in the game upon release and he's mostly a power flip damage support and power flip level three combo reduction which can be useful later on his skill provides only damage remember he mostly buffs power flip damage but not skill damage and combo count which is very little especially considering his heavy skill weight at 650 forcing him to usually be in the leader slot as the carry he is also a bow type which is absolutely awful in ai making him only playable in manual and even then outperformed by other options also fire power flip will be underdeveloped up until golem ex class is released and his meta board too in the future makes him much stronger in these situations next up we have marina someone's kind of familiar from guardian tales from guardian tales subs out there she's a b tier she's a decent character and will be stronger in the future with correct support marina on release is pretty mediocre she provides multi-ball and power flip support her ability three provides an extremely good amount of penetration uptime which will be meta for a long time since one of the strongest initial weapons multi requires penetration but because multi-ball damage is bad, we will need to wait for Golem EX class for more fire power flip support. Although once Kakuno is released, which is in about three months, you get more multi-balls to build up combo for power flip, along with longer penetration uptime. Mana Board 2 in the future also gives Marina gigantic boost. Next up, we have Clarice, which is going to be your preferred option if you're re-rolling for fire. You want Clarice. She's an A-tier rating. She's a strong carry through the early part of the game, falls off later, but still serves great in the support role for that element. Clarice is one of the best fire characters in the game. At release, she is a strong DPS character with lots of skill damage on her fireball skill. At the same time, her fireball applies fire resist down debuff, which increases fire damage on the target, which means other people in the lobby will also deal more damage to the target. This debuff is an extra damage multiplier, which makes Clarice still relevant as a strong support slash second DPS character when stronger fire skill damage characters get released. Clarice also fills 80% of her skill gauge at the start. All right, so Clarice is the best fire unit that you can start off with. Let's move to the water element with Sonya, who is the best water element to start off with early game. Sonya will serve as a staple in water for a long time and can be both a strong carry or a great support. She's the best water character for quite a while up until around half anniversary. This isn't saying much though because water is underpowered. Sonya herself doesn't have a clear archetype, but because of her skills, she can fit into any water team. Sonya's skill provides an attack buff for the entire lobby, which is very useful and generates a lot of combo. This makes her a strong support character that you can initially place into any team for the buff if you are missing units. The attack buff, huge combo generation, sword lead, and high base attack also makes her a solid power flip lead despite lacking power flip buffs. The combo generation is also useful in water direct attack setups along with her extra attack buff duration. She can also be used as a skill damage dealer as her skill does a lot of damage with lots of buffs and is key to one shot in Golem EX, the first difficult permanent content we get. Her mana board too is a meme and water has gotten strong characters in the past one and a half years, which means in the future she does lose her omnipresent status, so she gets power crept a little bit. Next up we have Sweezen, which is going to be tier F. 
and do not roll for him. All right, so we're going to keep it moving. Not going to spend too much time on any tier F characters. Next up, we have Thunder, which is going to first start off with Inaho. She has a D tier rating, has her niches later on, which you may find useful, but nothing too important. Inaho is kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. She provides decent fever support, decent damage, and paralysis, but all this stuff can be found on other characters of lower rarity who do it better than Inaho. That's all we need to know is that a lot of the stuff she offers, lower rarity characters do it better. All right, so let's keep it moving. Cagliostro, rating C tier. Strong healer, useful early on, nice to have in the far future. Cagliostro is a solid thunder healer to help keep you alive in the early game. The problem is thunder will get a solid three-star healer in Fula, and Cagliostro doesn't really bring much besides survivability, which isn't useful after a few weeks. This is especially true in the future as thunder gets insane units with incredible skill damage, skill spam, and even enmity where healing will actively hurt that team comp. I would not roll for Cagliostro besides having an easy early game because she will become very niche very quickly. Next up, we're going to move to my favorite element, which is going to be Wind, and the element that I'm personally going to be starting off with, and it's mainly because of this unit right here, Silty. She is an S-tier unit, meta-defining carry throughout the entire game's history. Silty is arguably one of the biggest balanced nightmares since World Flipper game release. This is because her skill scales infinitely off combo count, making her potentially do infinite damage. Even with wind weapon nerves being implemented immediately, Silty is still incredibly strong and once Shu releases along with Lich EX class weapons, Silty becomes the manual queen as you can easily maintain combo. Even in auto though, where AI cannot reliably keep combo up and may whip her skill a lot, she is still incredibly strong, although early game, Feria is more important with her utility and there are other DPS options available such as Sushiro. But as the game progresses, Silty is definitely more valuable and used in any high damage win teams. All right, so although Silty is meta defining, Feria, which is the next unit we're going to talk about, is still looked at as being more important in the early game. Feria is an A tier healer, strong for early game, relevant for win float meta later on. Feria is a healer that also grants float buff. Float is a very strong mechanic that gets heavily supported in the future and is also very strong early on. It's especially notable with Silty as Float keeps you in the air letting you maintain combo. Again, just like Silty, even with the wind weapon nerfed shipped immediately, she is still really strong and will become even more powerful with Lich EX class release along with shoe release. Fury is also wind's only good healer for a long time and one of the few float buffers making her more valuable than Silty early on but just re-roll for both of them to make your life easier. And I think I will take that advice, Mr. Underlight. All right, so Silty, Inferior, if you're rolling for wind, those are the two units that you want. And then we have Leon, which is gonna be an F tier unit, although he, has, he does have a pretty damn cool character design. But we're gonna keep it moving. F tier doesn't need to be talked about. Next up, we have the light element, which has Neftaeum, and she is a D tier. She's a decent light fever carry, but not vital and missing crucial units at launch. Neftum on release is decent. She provides solid damage and light fever, but there aren't enough units to maintain permanent fever for the strategy to be extremely effective. But once the Christmas banner come out with Christmas Inaho, you can make a solid light fever team to clear basically everything outside of EX slash hell class bosses. There are more important light units I would go for, so I wouldn't recommend rolling for her. All right, so stay away from Neftaeum. But this is the light element unit you want to go for, and it's going to be Lazelle. So Lazelle provides a lot of survivability along with damage, and is strong in every light composition. He's one of the best light characters, even up till present day in JP. He's a strong support that can tank for the team, and at the same time applies up to four buffs that increases team survivability and damage. This includes regeneration, which is core in light fever, along with buffs being good in the light skill damage teams as their carries scale off the number of buffs on them. This makes Lazelle useful in any light team. Lazelle plus Elia is definitely a very solid option to roll for to clear the game early on. All right. And next up, we have Acryl. This is going to be an F tier rating. So we're going to keep it moving on her. And we have Belsidia starting off the dark element. All right. Now, Belsidia is a C tier unit. She destroys early game bosses, but isn't useful once higher difficulty bosses come out that require elemental advantage units. Belsidia is a strong dark damage dealer that focuses on being below 50% health to deal massive damage. When built correctly, you can make a party that can one-shot most of the hard difficulty bosses. There are a few issues though. 
The first is many people who are not bringing dark teams may have healers, most notably the five star healers Cagliostro and Furia, whom their heals may bring Belsidia above the 50% health threshold, making your damage very little and slows down the co-op run. On the other hand, there are other four star carries, Sushi Row for Win, Rams for Thunder, that ha also have setups that can one shot most of the hard difficulty bosses too. They do not suffer from teammates bringing healers either. Plus, when harder difficulty bosses come out, you would need to start bringing elemental advantage units and the first EX difficulty boss for Dark didn't come out until after the half anniversary. All right, next we have Veron. S tier gives penetration buff and high attack buffs making him usable in every element. Veron is incredibly useful for two reasons. He gives a lot of attack damage modifiers and penetration. Penetration is meta early on in World Flipper for basically every team because the best weapon on release is Malti, which requires penetration to be active. This makes Veron incredibly strong in basically every element as you can put him unison sub to your carry unit, which will give a ton of attack along with the ability to use Malti. Ironically, Veron finds less usage in his own element and doesn't really see much use in his own element for a while, while Basidia teams outclass him. All right, guys, so you heard it there. Veron is a unit that's great for almost any element, any team comp due to that penetration buff. Penetration is meta early on. Then we hear float starts to get paid attention to a little bit more later. All right, now, hopefully this tier list helps you guys figure out how you want to formulate your teams or at least the first couple units that you want to shoot for in your beginning reroll for world flip all right so hopefully this tier list helps you out if it did leave a thumbs up be sure to join the official world flipper discord and my discord the gotcha headquarters down below using the links in the description and again big shout out to underlight thank you for putting out this beginner resource for all of us to go over i'm just making sure everyone sees it but all credit goes to underlight guys as always this for wolf pack we out